Hello everyone, welcome to another week in our garden. Now we're back down on the garden today after having last week at Gemma's and we have a couple of little jobs to do but first of all I was just looking round and we're still inundated with white fly. I was hoping that by this time they would have all gone but we're still inundated with them. It's been a very bad year for white fly. But we're cropping so we've got to be happy with the crops. The first job we're going to do, we're going to take some of the leaves off the celeriac and put some straw around the tubers at the bottom just to keep a little bit of the frost off. We have had a little bit of frost but it's only been a rimy frost but I think soon we'll be into the big minus frost so therefore the celeriac will want some protection. Behind me is the celery, what's left of it, we've been eating some. I shall lift nearly all of it now and we'll pop it in the freezer so we can use it through the winter. Okay, it's very nice in soups. But that is a job to do. I'm not too concerned, it's still growing quite well so it's quite happy with that. But this celeriac will want protection now. Also the Brussels, we've been picking the Brussels, they're very very nice this year and what I've done because of the white fly I've took quite a few of the leaves off and they don't sit, they seem to be growing all right because of it. As you can see the Brussels are standing well. They look a lot better now I've cleaned some of the leaves off but there's quite a bit of white fly still on it yet. Now I have been spraying the white fly with horticultural soap. They seem to be winning at the moment, but I think that's just there's just so much of it this year. So we'll clear the crops through the winter and hope that we're going to get some decent cold weather this year to take some of the white fly grubs out. Okay. Now when you look at your celeriac, you see lots of leaves that have fallen over. Most of them are split at the bottom anyway. So we need to take those leaves off and then put the straw on. So I'll just show you how we take them off. It's just a case of pulling them off. If you look, those leaves are finished. As they break down onto the floor, they're, they're shutting down anyway. So we'll take them off. Yeah. Now this is the, the second time that I've been over them. There's quite a few. Just pulled them off see there look it's finished it's still green but the, there's nothing coming up so it must take them off it'll also help the, the bottoms to to swell up a little as well and it's a good excuse while I'm here to get the weeds that will be inside out as well okay I'll go through and take the leaves off and then show you it before we put the barley straw on okay Right, I've taken quite a few of the leaves off now. I shall straw it, but then as the leaves fall down again, I should do it again perhaps two or three times yet until as we go into winter there'll be no tops on them at all, but there'll be a full bed of straw. What I'm using is this barley straw. I actually buy it for the chickens and I bought a couple of extra packs for this job as well. Now you can use anything really, sawdust, bracken, you can even put fleece around them if you want just to, but I think if I put barley straw on at the end of the season I can dig it into the soil because it'd be well rotted by then and it's actually a good aid for breaking this clay up. Let's get on. It's a case of just pulling it out and packing it round takes quite a time pack it round those roots I'll just do this corner and then we'll do the rest and show you it as you can see you'll have to do it several times through the through the winter. I'll just do this edge so you don't leave the front out. That's the 
the frost will get to those those roots a little now once you get some some wet weather on this it goes down so you'll have to do it again later but if you pack it well up round these tops it does hold against them a little and so it shouldn't be too much trouble it's the deep frost that we want to protect it from right so let's get on it would be it would take two of these bags for every time I straw them so it might take four bags through the season to get them strawed up properly okay I'll finish the bed and then come back to you now that's the celeriac strawed ready for the frost remember it will need to do it again and we will need to take some more of the tops off that is celeriac and it's called monarch they also I've just nipped round the edge and just turned the edge of the soil up just to give it a, a, an edge so it doesn't blow away so quite so easy now that little job's done that warm meal we'll nip to one of the new beds that I've just finished digging but I'll show you that in a moment and put the overwintered onions in they are seem to be going in a bit late but I have kept them in quite big pots while I prepared the bed because I didn't want to put them where I was going to do the digging okay now we're on plot A now now this will be the onions the beans or the leeks all the heavy feeders will be on to plot A they were in plot B but now they've moved up for next year and if you remember this is where the pumpkins and squashes were now I've actually divided the each plot into four this year to make access easier for me harvesting and for keeping the crop clean I find it very difficult to keep going down the long rows especially in the wet weather so I've changed the paths it's cost us a little bit of space but I think in the long run the ease of getting to the plots outweighs losing a little bit of space on the beds as you can see this is the first of the quadrants if you like it's been double dug it's had manure put in the bottom and then garden compost dug into the top spit it was a little higher than actually than this one here but when you get a bit of rain and a bit of frost etc it settles them down now the raised beds are actually in the way now for finishing these quadrants but the raised beds will actually move down this year in the rotation to plot C but I'll show you that when I move them down but we can't move them because they've got carrots and parsnips in likewise the bed there has still got a little bit of beetroot in, in the corner so we can't really finish that bed we can't really finish that plot yet but as you can see it's half done now these are the overwintered onions now I have kept them in these pots while I was preparing the bed and then I had to leave it for a week or so for the bed to settle but now we can get them planted they have been outside all the time they've had no no cover there's one I believe that's not grown but I'm sure they're rooted down and ready there you are you see that's a lovely plant ready to go in they've had no I've got a leaf on that one not? they've had no no heat or anything but I've kept them waiting for the today right what I'm going to do I'm just going to make a little hole and then just drop them in and side them up okay no feed or anything going in there's enough feed in these beds for these you see like that I should just keep them what eight inches apart 
we'll go on eight inches which is about there look so we'll do on that and we'll take them a foot in from the edge so I'll do one or two and then then I'll, I'll show you them in let's do let's do half a dozen shall we one two three four five and that one six just do them quickly for you make sure they're, they're down well and remember this soil will fall a little with the rain etc so it can be up a little on them yeah, they're all rated down, rotated down and ready to go we always find if we do too many of the overwintered onions they tend to get in the way of the next crop the main crop of onions so i'm only doing a couple of rows this year if you want if you remember that when come spring we'll be getting spring onions as well so there won't be a shortage of onions we're only putting a few in Here are, look, I'll finish them in and then come back to you when they're in. That's... I'll just show you this. That one didn't grow at all, look. But there are some... There's a little bit of swelling where the roots were, but and it feels firm enough, but obviously now that's a reject. That's the overwintered onions in. Just enough for what we need and Diane will put the name on the screen for you now that's got the onions in I'm pleased I've got those in I'll have to just put something round them and round that straw just to keep the chickens off I do light them down here this time of year but it's Mm, they're nearly out <laughs> right so now we're going to do a little bit of harvesting I do believe we've got some nice Brussels sprouts we'll take some leeks parsnips there's a few lettuce that want using up we'll take those and a, a few celery want lifting Right, I'm just going to pick a few brussels. I'll leave the bottom ones that's small and just take them from the bottom up but take the larger ones obviously. And it's just a case of breaking them up. And say there's still an odd white lying amongst them yet. But with me taking the leaves off, the sprouts themselves are perfect clean so if you leave the leaves on you'll find that you'll get smut from the flies on the sprouts to sell so it's best to take them off not the biggest of sprouts yet but there's nice Sunday lunch there I won't, I'll go to there but no They've had a frost or two on them, so they should be all right. And they're very firm. They say so we've had a few, and they're absolutely beautiful. Now, even my granddaughters will eat these sprouts, so it's good to grow your own. Here are a few sprouts, just enough there for us. Even got a bit of white fly as well. Mm. Now my carrots are nowhere ready, I think with being so hot this year they just haven't grown in the heat. They will make it eventually, but then again if the winter shuts them down 
then they'll stop growing till the spring so we'll play that by ear on the carrots right we're going to take a kohlrabi there is a small one on the edge that Diane said that would be just big enough for Sunday for us so we've taken that we'll take two or three celery then we'll go for the leek and I do believe there's odd parsnip we can have and some lettuce that won't use enough okay I'll take three of the celery and I should take them from the centers because the frost we've been having just lately has just nipped the edges a bit of the outside plants so I'll go into the center and pull three out okay Nice plants, look at the length on those, beautiful. I'll just dress it and then I'll dress it here and then I'll take the rubbish away when we've finished, okay? Now you can use the tops, don't forget, beautiful tops. I like to chop my way round and then slice off you see just like that nice and clean and then anything like that you must well take off here and then we'll put those in the in the bin that one's added as well just look at those beautiful salaries so I'll cut the top off there remember you can use tops if you wish at the moment I shall give these to the chickens let them have a peck at them because we're really we've got plenty of lettuce etc up at the house there you go very nice that we'll get three of those there you are that's three nice celery Octavius we'll have to lift some more and get in the freezer before the weather really breaks but it seems to be okay at the moment just while we're behind the celery patch you can see nice kale coming through there that was just a few because the, there'll be a lot of it we don't eat a lot of kale there's oh. some nice winter cabbages here doing well and then a few red cabbage that are doing well as well so they're all to follow at the moment the looks of it it wants a bit of weeding i'll have to get in there and get them sorted now with one or two autumn cauliflowers there they're doing rather well i've took the cover off because again they've got a bad attack of white fly so i've exposed them hopefully the bad weather will take some of the white fly off i will take some leaves off in the next day or two and try and spray again there was a few late set spring onion type here looks on it they want weeding i'll have to get round to it now there's a, a line of the holland blood red and a line of guardsmen so i just lift a few to take up the house these won't be totally winter hardy so really they won't move in okay but we'll take the bigger one we'll have to clean them when we get them up to the tank there are a few nice do you want a couple more I just lift a good few. There you are, look. There you are then a few pulling onions, as I call them, but they are, you think you call them spring onions. Spring onions in the autumn. Right, we'll just take these couple of lettuce here they are very very late but they are still holding with the good weather so we'll keep them going as long as we can but we'll take these two 
I can just pull them out, cut off. That's a nice little letter, little gem they call so they won't get big. Now to be cutting a lettuce at the beginning of November out of a garden as exposed as this, that can't be bad. Right, I'm taking a couple of these leeks out and as you can see behind me, plot B is under construction on the division into four beds. This will be the corner bed. But again, we'll have to wait until the leeks are gone to finish the end of the bed. Nice and deep. It's a good one. Bit of a stone something there. It's a good leak. I'll just shake it a little. On. There you are. There's a little bit of rust coming on them, but I think that's because they're close to that raised bed. They, that's another another reason for making the beds into four so we can give the plants more room. The deep that's got it. There you are, it's a nice leak. I just make sure the soil is tight around the leaks that you're leaving because you have just loosened the roots on them. Just knock some of the soil off. I like to keep the soil on the beds. There you are. Right, to dress the leak, I'll just take the root off on the garden. You could do with a, when you get up there to clean it properly you do with a really sharp knife. This one's not so sharp now. But we'll just take one or two of these off lot. Not too many and then just cut off like that and like that, and then that's ready to go up to be cleaned, okay? So that's a couple of leeks, and now we'll go and see what we've got parsnip-wise. Have a look and see if we can get a parsnip out of this. The tops haven't died off yet, but they won't be long. But they will be very nice. Now these are javelin F1, parsnip javelin F1. We'll see if we can get down and get one out, have a look. They're very deep. There you are. For me, that's a very fine parsnip on this clay land. This is the beauty of doing them in this raised bed. Take two because we're not sure how many we'll have for lunch at the weekend, so we'll take two, make sure we've got plenty. If we can. Oh. Oh, I've got three. There you are then, that one's a little bit small but just as tasty. So that's three parsnips for the weekend, they'll do nicely and they'll wash up beautiful, they will. I should just tread back any of the soil that's come loose, leave it nice and tight for the others. Right, here's our, what we've harvested with you today and a few things that we've brought out of the shed that want to go up to the house anyway. So I'll go through it, what we just lifted. Oh. Celery, very nice, good length on it, so that's good. Till the frost and then that will stop. First of the parsnips, they're very nice. Leeks, 
always doing well the leeks a couple of the little gem they're about finished now but they're still cropping so we'll still pick them until they're finished a few pulling onions spring onions that's the danish red and that's the uh, guardsman i think it's called that one there is in there a celeriac that is very nice we'll have that this week and boil it up with mash it up with your potatoes it's absolutely superb and a few more of the brussels which are coming some of the sweetest brussels i've had for a long time now out of the shed taking a few potatoes out the store a butternut squash out the store the peppers are what we picked and we've ripened them off in the shed likewise the tomatoes we just put them in the shed in those trays and let them ripen and they're doing quite well a contribution from the chickens is three lovely eggs one green and then these are off the little buffies which are beautiful eggs so we're on the 2nd of November today and as you can see that's that's a very nice harvest for well it'll be the weekend but into next week as well to eat all these we'll be picking these now for a while especially the winter crops you can't beat the taste and the quality of what you grow your own if you ask anybody who got an allotment or a big garden like we've been lucky to have they'll tell you that the vegetables that you do grow for the price of a few seed and a little bit of effort you can't beat the taste and the quality of okay now then so that'll be it for this week hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for those people who have subscribed we do appreciate it and most of all thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you next week bye now